Bitcoin is oh so close to new all time highs. And I know with this, I can see it in the charts and I know the sentiment of the market right now is very euphoric. You know, there's a lot of happiness. People are making very nice profits. And with that, you know, the FOMO is very high indeed. Everybody's getting back in with this. Ah, is it time to buy Bitcoin? Oh, Daniel, I, I see Bitcoins, baby. You know, everybody is just coming back into the space. With, of course, this is positive. This is good overall. But that does come with some warning signs for me creeping into this market. So, you know, I, I think that you know me by now. If you've been watching my content over the years, uh, whether it's here on YouTube, whether you're a member, you know, I'm very much I like to feel like a voice of reason. You know, I'm not going to get carried away like a moon boy and just say bye, 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 bye. And then when a big drop comes, well, just say bye, bye, bye. And then we get a bear market and, you know, everybody gets wrecked. I'm not that type of trader, right? I'm very, uh, you know, focused on the charts, able to update my bias. And at the same time, I don't get involved in that kind of perma bear, short, 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 short. You know, if you've been watching the content this year and last year, <laughs> you know, since the past few months, we've been very much long and chill. You know, how many times have I come into a video long and chill, no short trades here, expecting higher prices, you know, absolutely no shorts for me as with trading. And that is not because I'm a perma bull, neither. No, it's because the charts are telling me what I need to trade, okay, and how I need to trade. The charts are bullish, thus I am bullish. If I start to see sign of weakness, I will take a short trade. So I want to tell you something very special for this video. In this video, my friends watching this, I will be going through what I am looking at next in terms of the upcoming all-time high, how I will be trading during the month of March, very important, how we are then together able to use the technical analysis that I will share with you to recognize long the dip opportunities, to recognize next major levels that we have above us and going into all-time highs, right? And I want to touch a little bit on Elliott Waves. I know... <laughs> You know, a lot of people love Elliott Waves, as do I. And so I'd like to touch on that as well in this video. And remember, back a few years, who shorted $69,000 at uh, November time and held it all the way down to $17,000. Uh, obviously, Elliott Waves, what I'm saying, are very helpful. So we're going to be using Elliott Waves once again to help us time the all-time highs. Uh, so I hope that you thoroughly enjoy this video, principally... <laughs> I want you to learn from the video. We're going to have a good time as always. We're going to continue raking in these profits and we're going to go over to what we love, the charts, the technical analysis. I will preface this video. I do feel it's going to be a little bit longer than normal, but I really hope you can maintain that attention. It's hard in 2024, right? Everyone wants to scroll TikTok, but if you want to be making profits, if you want that consistent journey with me, to be a career of a trader, to do what you love. You can work anywhere you want in the world. You can just make so much profits if you listen closely to the knowledge and insights that I will share with you, as long as, as well as the, you know, the, all the educational content that we're giving. Like, we can really change your life. So I hope you can maintain your attention and focus during this video. I will be giving you some very nice insights and golden nuggets. But yeah, maybe it's going to go on a little bit longer. But you know, I'm not going to waste my time as I don't want to waste yours. Everything that I will talk about, I honestly feel is going to be beneficial to your trading. So Yes, and of course, I will be talking about what I'm looking at going forwards in the month of March and the targets that we have ahead of us, right? So starting off, though, uh, I want to go through a little bit of a tip. And this is important, right? So this is a tip when it comes to trading in general, managing the emotions. We are humans. We cannot remove our emotions, but we can get that grip on them and manage them. When it comes to trading, you need to do that if you want to make consistent profits, right? And so I want to refer back to a few days ago now uh, and what we were looking at live in the time when it comes to drops to the downside. So this is, I'm going to use this as an example, but we've seen it many times over the past few months, right? There has been times where price drops very quick and fast. Here we see a simple swing fire pattern of the high, but nevertheless, big drop off the back of it. And so I question you uh, in this video, you know, when you see these big drops, are you going to panic? Are you going to get scared? Are you going to not long the dip and miss the long trade? Or even worse, you know, in my opinion, short 
the bottom of a big drop to the downside. You know, if I, as I say here, if you do any of the above, <laughs> or you just miss the trade because you're frozen, you know, if you do any of that, then you need to educate yourself, uh, whether it's via us or someone else. You need to get that education, that plan on lockdown. Might be to do with your emotions, might be to do with your plan, might be to do with your technical analysis or a mixture of all, but you need to find a mentor that can help you conquer that, right? And for myself, you know, I give guidance uh, and my opinions on the market as it's happening. And, and this is what my thought process is. Again, we're reflecting this to any move that could happen on the chart. For example, here, 10, nearly 10% 10 drop to the downside quickly, right? The majority of people would be fearful. What would I be looking at? So how can I benefit you? The things I would be looking at on a drop. I think to myself, well, what's my overall higher term time frame bias? Well, this is bullish. Okay, I've made this extremely transparent, honest, and clear. I've been bullish for a while now, right? Uh, long and chill, no short trades, looking for higher continuous week after week. And so my higher term time frame is, is bullish. I, I am looking for new all-time highs, right? And so that, that comes into play. I remember my bias. Uh, so then naturally, we I, I believe I will make more money long in the dip. So I'm more interested in long trades on, on nice dips. But the most important factor is when that dip comes, what am I looking at? I'm looking at the support in terms of what we have here. We had the uh, session VWAP. Of course, I'll be looking visually at the chart. And the order flow, for me, those are factors extremely important to making good decisions. What would I do on the back of this drop? I would make a decision of, is this a long the dip opportunity or is this the start of a sign of weakness where I would be getting more bearish? Well, for example, here on the drop that we see on the, the 28th of February, I tell my team really simply that this drop, again, this is not hindsight. This is live in the time as it's happening. You see this print screen 11.53. So 11.53 is, you know, as that drop is exactly happening, 24 seconds left uh, of 11.54. And you see, you know, I'm posting exactly when it's happening, right? I'm telling my team, this is not a sign of weakness, you know, avoid these emotions. Uh, but for me anyway, this is a buy the dip opportunity, long the dip opportunity, right? So it helps myself and others like manage that fear that can creep in or freezing in the market. You know, we've come down to the VWAP. This is a very nice opportunity and you get a reaction. It's a, it's already a big long the dip opportunity. And you know, there are potentially some people were asking me, Daniel, we took out $60,000 on CME this high, uh, hit above 69,000, <laughs> hit above 60,000. <000. laughs> getting a bit ahead of myself this high hit above 60,000 on the CME so there's questions of like oh we took out the CME $60,000 is this not more bearish now we're getting a big drop no you know really you know I'm focused on buy a bit I am still uh long in the dip and you know I'm not fearful and we all know by now right this dip was the absolute low on the VWAP and we continued up above $60,000 there are lots of examples that we could go through where Big drops happen, big drops come, but we need to make, you know, stick to our plan, understand the technical analysis and make great informed trading opportunities. So the next tip that I want to talk you through, of course, there's buying the dip. And let's just zoom out for a second and remember the prevailing overall uptrend. So what else do we, you know, what else I've been be saying a lot, it's, it's long and chill, right? So this is where I can help you with this kind of, when I'm saying like long and chill, that means we don't want to be, I've said it before, right? Keep your short short and your longs long. So you don't want to, just as you don't want to, um, you know, get fearful on each drop, you don't want to then on each big rise to the upside, sell your positions and get rid of your long trades. Again, non-financial advice, but I wouldn't do that personally. And so from my, you know, experience, that's not a good thing to do when we're in a big bull market. And, you know, this is obviously what we're teaching. And it's great to see, you know, champions are like listening uh, to, you know, guidance and tips and tricks of not closing longs too early. And you can see here are some examples uh, from champion members that, you know, would have without that, you know, closed their longs way too early, but instead, you know, are able to really excel during this nice uptrend and, and make some really good profits. And I want to spend a two minutes actually dedicated here to this champion member who is, oh, I think really could be used as inspiration or, or just when you see him learning alongside you, just be like, well, this guy is putting in a lot of time and effort. And that's, you know, I, I would like to dedicate a few minutes just to read his post. Um, I don't want to butcher the name, but I want to say Murph. 
<laughs> but I'm sorry if it's totally wrong. Um, and I want to dedicate a few, just a few moments to read through this. Why? Because what he's saying is very impactful and very important for many people watching this video. Okay. So let me read this out for you a second. I'm not going to read it out. I'll summarize. Again, just, of course, it's a long message. So summarizing, uh, basically, you know, he's been in the group for a year during that year period you know it's not all been good there have been bad months there have been losses there has been you know as i would always say for myself like this period of pain suffering like depression people get sad they start to think trading is not for them you know during those bad periods which even for myself will happen right everyone's going through them but as a beginner as a learner even as an intermediate you know you, it's going to happen way more regularly and way more often right but what is really, really nice about this message is that he's gone through that. And as you can see here, uh, this month has been his best of all time, and he is now finally a profitable trader. And so like he says here, you know, in conclusion, I want to mention that I've had some difficult moments where it didn't look good, but he never gave up. These challenging times were crucial in shaping his journey journey. They are part of it. And as long as you keep going and never give up just because of a bad week or longer periods, right? Uh, with, you know, thanks to chart champions, you can easily become and be a part of the top 5% that are regularly making profits. And on that, we got another really nice, of course, all the money shots are always nice, but I want to uh, talk about this post as well, because this is another champion member that is really dedicated. And this is what I mean by dedication, like long-term, like really putting in hard work, you know, went through periods of hardship, losing lots of trades. But this is another bit of, just a quick segment, I want to spend one more minute on this, but just a nice bit of motiv motivation for you. I mean, you can read this yourself, right? We, of course, now trade pretty heavily the ES and the NQ, so the futures markets. Uh, and this is what he primarily trades. But, um, you know, with that, we see what we like to teach and I want to emphasize is patience, of course, but understanding you're not after, you know, crazy, crazy numbers, right? If you can just get consistent gains, that's what that's what we teach. That's what we want to see. So uh, you can see here, Tuesday, one of his best trading days ever with a 2.6% gain. Of course, he's not using leverage. We can understand from this. Uh, then Wednesday, plus 0 0.33. Thursday, plus 0 0.68. Friday, plus 0 0.13. Then this week, Monday, 0 0.53. Tuesday, first negative day. After a nice streak, minus 0 0.46. Wednesday, small gain. Thursday, uh, another really nice day, plus two. So you can see in the last two weeks, overall 5.5% gain. It's not phenomenal. I would say that's very good. <laughs> but it is disciplined and quite consistent, even if the progression probabilities are huge. OK, like he says, do not take it for granted. Stay focused, keep disciplined. And, you know, this is what you want. This is what we mean by consistency. OK, there are you don't you don't see in here a massive day of, uh, you know, a million percent gain. You don't see any crazy moves. It's just consistency. There are losses that's expected. But overall, your PL curve is owing up and up slowly. Right. That's what we want to get you to. And that's you know why I refer to you to some champion members posts there. OK, so now I want to bring it over to the chart a second of what we got going on locally, and then I'll bring it with an end towards Elliott Waves. Um, so here locally, you can see I've got a few nice key levels marked out on the chart. So within this, we can start to divide ranges, right? So we got a range high and a range low. You could essentially ignore the higher term time frame levels, and you could say and kind of trade it like this in terms of range high, range low. You could look to trade this range till it breaks. This is what I would say is more of like a day trader's perspective. If you're more of a scalp trader, you want to take more trades, this is when you can look at those kind of intraday levels. You can see this zone of around 62,800, the NPOC just below taking out $60,000. These are acceptable levels uh, to trade, but you need at that point to be paired with order flow. You know, if you try and trade those levels without looking at key order flow statistics, 
then just like the order flow says, you will end up getting wrecked. In my opinion, like you, you need to be checking the order flow if you want to trade these intraday uh, intraday levels. Otherwise, you are ultimately asking for trouble. OK, so with that very much emphasized in importance, you got the bigger range, which is a layer of, of I would say, like easier trading. I would still pair it with order flow, but it's less I just want to say it's easier to just trade the high and low of a range than the intraday. Like invalidations are harder. The setup is kind of more complex. So I would always say the easiest is trade the range till it breaks. And then your intraday levels of that range are acceptable to trade, of course, but they are a bit more complex because you need to be very, you know, you have to have a good understanding of order flow. Let's just say that. Um, so when we start to look outside of the range, okay, so I want to just hide that parallel channel a second. When we start to look outside of this range, we can see we have above us this weekly. This is the last weekly in the chart. This is the last higher higher term time frame weekly. So that comes in at 65,560 to be precise. And 50 cent if you want to be even more precise, right? So we always view this as a little bit of a zone. I would never say exact dollar. We can be aware that this is a zone of resistance above us. Uh, do I think this is a massive level? The answer is no. Would I take a trade there for getting a reaction? Well, of course I would, yes. So I would really just like to bring your attention to this. My bias, of course, is bullish. I am expecting all-time highs. I'm very much long and chill as it stands right now. Where would then I be interested in my next shorts? Well, of course, I can look to trade this range till it breaks, where I simply have to range high. But just above that range high, we have the potential of a failed auction right off of the weekly level. This is once again the last weekly in the chart. What a time to be alive. Uh, <laughs> at $65,560. So it's just a level that I want to remind you of, bring your attention to, not let you forget, um, because you know there can definitely be reactions at these levels. But when we start to talk about then above into all-time highs, this is where things get very interesting indeed. And with this, what do I like to do? I like to use Elliott Waves, right? With that, I just want to do one very quick announcement very quickly. And that is, uh, well, I, of course, I am uh, in the Discord all day long. And I saw a lot of people who, unfortunately, I suppose at the time anyway, were trading on Coinbase. I uh, had just a lot of complaints. Oh, my God, it's one of the biggest volatility days we've seen in a very long time. And what happens? Coinbase goes down. This is nothing new. I've been around in the space for a long time now. Uh, on days of volatility, some exchanges have problems. And of course, I will say this, people are free to choose whatever exchange they want. And really, it's, it's the way it has to be, right? And, uh, you know, so you should choose your exchange. Uh, but when an exchange goes down in times of such importance, you really should start to ask questions, okay? Don't just blindly listen, your assets are safe. You know, do some research, understand. Of course, I'm, I'm not trying to cause FOMO here, by the way. Coinbase, I absolutely agree, uh, is expected to be safe and I have no quarrels or any issues with Coinbase. The only thing is, of course, when it goes down during a big term of volatility, this is not the first time this happens on Coinbase and it won't be the last. It's just a little bit of an annoying exchange if you're a trader. But yeah, no, I, I, I would not say Coinbase is unsafe. And if Coinbase went down, you know, that would be extremely bad news for the whole space. So of course, I don't want to see that either. But, you know, do your own research, take some levels of precaution. And if you do want to sculpt trade, uh, especially like it's probably not the best place to do that but long-term holds yeah coinbase you know it's the biggest one so in terms of spot holdings i will just say this you know of course my primary exchanges bybit and bingx they held up perfectly for me anyway during these rises i saw nobody else mentioning anything bad so you know bybit and bingx holding up well if you're interested in them as always i remind you we do have the deals for bybit and bingx and the number one crypto vpn if you want a vpn go go along with them uh these are two crypto exchanges that are nice to use for myself and so if you're interested in getting involved in the 30,000 deposit bonus on Bybit or the 6,200 rewards on BingX you absolutely can BingX no KYC required right uh, VPN no of course always nice to have Top Step is the prop firm that we're partnered with so yeah these are three partnerships if you want to take advantage of them it's in the deals page that's all I will say on that and well let's hope for that all exchanges can get past uh, some of these annoying uh, problems. But for me anyway, Bybit and BingX have not had those problems. So, you know, always happy to promote, uh, you know, exchanges that I feel are very good. So 
Um, so moving it back on to the technical analysis and of course, Elliott waves. We currently have our all time high around $69,000. I just wanna play this one special, special clip for you uh, from actually, when was this recorded? This was two years ago. This was back in April, 2021, wow. Uh, and this was uh, from an Elliott Wave uh, stream. As you can see, it was a public live stream around two hours long and listen to here of where I was making a prediction based off of Elliott Waves for the high to come in that I was wanting to short. Take a listen to this because it's a few years back. But that is what happens in a wave three, you know, and for our target of this, we're taking it from the low. Again, it's, it's debatable whether our wave one ended here or here. We're just going to go for the highest and then bringing it down. Surprise, surprise. You see this 69,774. No. <laughs> oh my God. I just ended up speaking for like another 15 minutes uh, on mute. I forgot to unmute my microphone after I muted it to listen to that maybe five second clip on YouTube, but I'm going to come back. I'm going to end this video. I'm going to probably do it a little bit quicker, but oh, that is frustrating. But that is another reason we have to learn from our mistakes. That was a mistake that I'm going to learn from and really hope I don't do again. So uh, where was I? We were just talking about your waves and how we managed to time that uh, all-time high at $69,000. Well, that was a good time. Let's, re let's reminisce on that for a second and help me, let me explain like how I done that and like what we can be using uh, that to look at the current state of the market, right, as we're expecting all-time highs and how Elliott waves, as they help me predict the market of the all-time high back in November 2021, Predicting this $69,000 high and once again, not only predicting, but trading that with a short entry at $69,000. This was several market orders, all took around 69, average price 68,900. Uh, but I had entry shorts just above 69K too. How I went on to trade that all the way down, of course, to, well, I'm getting an entry that I'm still in from $16,000. Just want to spend like one really quick minute. I just done a good five minutes explaining this, but one very quick minute to, uh, you know, let you understand this. Uh, first of all, there's traders and there's technical analysis. They're not the same. You can be very good at analysis. Doesn't mean you're very good at trading. Why? Because it comes down to the emotions that we've gone through a lot in this video, right? You have to be able to conquer those emotions, take the trades, not just explain on the charts. As you can see, not only was I predicting and calling from this from the analysis, but I also did trade it too, uh, all the way down to $16,000. In the end, by the way, this short trade from $69,000 was closed with an average price of around $36,000. I waited for a very nice sign of strength. Um, and with the help of Bybit, <laughs> uh, this managed to actually get closed out last year uh, for around uh, $35,000, which I'm very content with. So um, what does that mean though? You can see there, I had a short from $69,000 closed, not at $16,000, but closed at around $35,000. Even no though I had this long. Class, cabron. <laughs> That's hilarious. That was a recording of me realizing that I was on mute. <laughs> Hope you don't understand Spanish because I was, very frustrated. Uh, that is so funny. Oh man, we got a lot going on in this video. I'm very sorry for bringing away the professionality for a, for a, for a minute there. Let's get back to professional, right? So um, yeah, I do have a long entry from $16,000, but this actually almost took, caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to make such gains with this. Why? Because at the lows here, I was still absolutely cautiously, you know, um, you know, I wasn't openly extremely bullish down here, expecting that to be the low. No, I was cautious. You know, I was expecting really to not, I would have loved to have seen like $10,000 taken out. Right. So again, I was short from $69,000. I missed the low by a, you know, a few thousand dollars. Why? Because I would have liked to have seen a lower target hit of around ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, which in the end didn't happen right but it's all fine why because i went from cautious to very openly switching bullish after two major signs of strength the first really simply this let me hide all those other levels for you a second okay really simply this so what happens down here you form a bottoming pattern left shoulder right shoulder 
there's a head and shoulders pattern. So you form a bottoming pattern down here. That's one sign of strength. The second sign of strength is then flipping that resistance into support. You can see clear as day, resistance, resistance, support, support. And I'd say the third and the biggest sign of strength then was reclaiming the previous range value area low, right? So when you take this as the previous range, you can see the value area low in and around $30,000 was once support on a bigger time frame, resistance, resistance, resistance. So you see the similarities here, just on time frame perspective. Here you had an old resistance flip to support. And here you had the old support flip to resistance. That resistance tested this old resistance, <laughs> that resistance flip come back to test this as support, and then you break out. So as you break out here, very massively bullish. Why? You've put in a bottoming pattern of the head and shoulders. You've then gone on to reclaim the level and you're back into the previous range value area low. I have undeniably been extremely bullish since we got above there in October. And again, some people are going to say, ha, 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 you were not longing uh, $16,000. Well, technically, I was going to have a long open from $16,000. But ha, ha, you were not really bullish at $16,000. And no, I wasn't. You know, I'm not perfect. <laughs> you know, I was very happy at the time with my shorts from the all-time high, collecting funding. And I switched very bullish as we broke up here. But ultimately, I'm very happy with that. That's my style of trading. I've made millions in this market. You know, I'm not going to spend a day worrying about that. So for me, you know, that's what it comes down to when it looking for those big signs of strength and signs of weakness. So as I, as I was wanting to mention, you know, Elliott Waves, um, just for an, uh, just so you are aware, on Sunday during the Champions live stream, I will be going through the full Elliott Wave camp. So if you want to get everything about the Elliott Waves, then on Sunday, that's where I'm going to be going through the Elliott Waves, right? And if you want to learn Elliott Waves, of course, we do have already released the full Elliott Wave module on our website. So you can catch that whenever you want. And on Sunday, during the Champion stream, I'm going to be going for a full, a full Elliott Wave count. Of course, when it comes to Elliott Waves, we can be looking at the Bybit chart, where we only have the past few years of data from really around 2019. Really, when you're analyzing Elliott Waves, you need to spend a long time and go through older charts, such as Bitstamp chart, where you analyze from the opening of Bitcoin, really trading on exchanges around 2011, right? So you have the overall high accounts, and then you can look at this, analyze on a lower term time frame. Here for the public, I'm going to give you one really nice pool to be aware of. And then if you want more, you can catch it in the Champions live stream. Why? Because Elliott Waves are a long uh, it's not a quick thing that you can go over, right? You have to analyze a lot. But if you look at this as a wave one ABC retracement, so wave one ABC retracement. So basically when it comes to Elliott waves, you're always looking for like a one, two, three, four, five, okay? Fives and threes. So five waves up, three waves down. And as you can actually see here really nicely, uh, we have you know, a little bit of a one, two, three, four, five. So we can say, okay, this is a wave one. And then we'd already see here, ABC expanded flat. Okay, wave two. And now we see a very expansive wave three. And then of course, at some point we get a four and a five. But what I really like about this is, you know, technically very valid, very nice. Uh, we actually pull the Fibonacci extension from the top of wave, well, start of the wave one to the top of the wave one to the end of wave two. You can see that 1618 coming in at 73,371. So this is a level I do think you should have marked on your charts. And this is a very quick glimpse of Elliott waves, right? As mentioned, if you want the full in-depth analysis, where it might even be different uh, when I've spent some time on it, right? then that's going to be for the champions during the champions live stream on Sunday. Of course, I would not trade off of that one pull alone, as you should not either. When it comes to Elliott Waves, we need to use Elliott Waves. We need to use a lot of different Fibonacci tools, not just the extension. We need to add in expansions. We need to add in the negative pulls. We need to add in on massively, of course, uh, Fibonacci time. All of this coming together to make very good informed decisions. I'll tell you this, if you try and short all-time highs without a good plan, you will get wrecked. You will lose a lot of trades. You need to have a very well detailed, thought out plan in validations, because if you are going to be short in all-time highs, the majority of people will short, 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 short and lose. So you need to be very selective with your trades. And that's what I'm going to be doing on Sunday, being very selective, finding the levels, 
where I'm going to be showing the next all-time highs. So if you're interested in that, you know where to get it. And if you want to see more of myself, the other coaches, whether you're looking to trade the ES, NQ, Bitcoin, crypto, altcoins, all of this is covered on our website. Every week we have streams dedicated to all of that. We have live trading streams. Of course, we have the champion streams. We have daily live streams. Every single day of the week, we've got live streams going on, right? So if you want to get that, Alongside the educational course, you know where to be, chartchampions.com. I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to say thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you, champs. Well, thank you everybody for watching. And yeah, if you want more, you know where to get it, chartchampions.com. Thank you ever, ever so much. That is me signing out of this one. I'll see you on Sunday for the Elliott Waves. Thank you, Anne. Goodbye.